Howdy folks and welcome to the channel. In today's episode, we'll talk about time depth conversion for seismic images. Seismic reflection surveys work by measuring travel times, that is how long it takes sound waves to travel down to subsurface reflectors and bounce back up to receivers. This means seismic data is naturally in the time domain, so the depth axis represents travel times measured in seconds. But here's the thing, the real world works in depth domain, with actual distances measured in meters. This creates a fundamental problem. When we're doing seismic interpretation, whether it's reservoir characterization, finding different formations, or locating drilling targets, we eventually need our results in real-world depth units. After all, you can't drill a well based on travel time measurements. So when engineers are planning a drilling program, they need to know a reservoir is at, for example, 2000 meters depth, not 1500 milliseconds two-way travel time. So at some point in every seismic interpretation workflow, we need to convert our data from time domain to depth domain. This conversion process is absolutely essential for any real-world application of seismic interpretation results. There are different approaches to handling this domain issue depending on the workflow. For example, in the seismic to well tying process, we convert well log data from depth to time using velocity information from, for example, the sonic log. But since the real world works in depth units, the standard approach for seismic interpretation is converting seismic data from time to depth, so everything ends up in the same practical coordinate system. As an interpreter, you'll get seismic images in either time or depth domain depending on the processing workflow. The domain depends on what type of migration was applied during processing. Time migration gives you time domain data, while depth migration gives you depth domain data. The migration choice depends on geological complexity. Simple geology with gentle dips works fine with time migration, but complex structures with steep dips or rapid velocity changes need depth migration for accurate positioning. If your data already comes in depth domain, you're all set, but most commonly you'll get time domain seismic data along with a velocity model for doing the conversion yourself. To convert seismic data from time to depth, you need accurate interval velocities throughout your survey area. There are several ways to get these velocities. The most common approach uses stacking velocity velocities derived from velocity analysis during normal move-out correction in the processing workflow. Since every post-stack seismic image needs this velocity analysis step, you'll always have access to stacking velocities. These can be converted to interval velocities using the Dix equation. Another approach uses velocity information from well logs. If you have enough sonic logs spread across your survey area, they can give you really accurate interval velocities. The thing is, well logs have great vertical resolution but poor lateral coverage, so you need multiple wells spread throughout the survey to build a reliable 3D velocity model. One approach is to use geostatistical methods or machine learning algorithms to interpolate the log velocities into full 3D models. These approaches typically give you very accurate results when you have good well coverage. Alright, now let's see how we could do this in Petrel and then in our very own platform, Seismic Flow. As you can see, I have Petrel open and ready to go. Start by right-clicking the input data tree and choosing the import file option. Then in the file type drop-down menu, select SegBy Seismic Data. Both Seismic Amplitude Data and Velocity Cubes come as SegBy files, so you import them using the same process. When importing your seismic data, the dialog will ask for general information such as name and type. It usually also detects whether the data is 2D or 3D correctly. The critical setting is the domain specification. Choose elevation time or elevation depth to match your data. This tells Petrel how to interpret the vertical axis. Next, import your velocity cube using the same SegBy import process. Here's where you need to pay attention. In the template section, Petrel defaults to treating everything as seismic data, but you're actually loading velocity information. You must correctly specify whether you're loading stacking velocity or interval velocity in the template dropdown. If you don't set this correctly, the conversion algorithm won't work properly because Petrel won't understand what type of data you've loaded. Make sure both datasets are in the same domain. Both should be set to elevation time if you're starting with time domain data. Now let's create our velocity model. Use Petrel's search function, type velocity, and select simple velocity model. This tool builds a velocity model directly from your velocity cube. Just choose your velocity cube from the data tree and add it to the box in the dialog. Keep the default datum settings unless you have specific requirements and then apply the changes. Don't let the word simple fool you though, this isn't an inferior method. It's called simple because you already have a velocity cube to work with. Petrel also has an advanced velocity model tool for cases where you need to build velocity models from scratch using bell log data and multiple interpreted horizons. Once your velocity model is ready, go to the seismic interpretation tab, find the depth section, and open domain conversion. Select your velocity model from the drop-down, add your seismic data to the conversion list, set the direction to time to depth and click OK. This 
process typically takes several minutes to complete. After conversion, your depth data shows up in the data tree with a TWT to Z suffix, where the arrow indicates the domain conversion from time to depth. When viewing your data in Petrel's 3D window, pay attention to the domain dropdown that shows any TVD or TWT. This controls which domain the 3D viewer is working in. Set this correctly based on your data. Use TWT for time domain visualization or TVD for depth domain visualization. This is a common source of confusion when data appears to be missing or incorrectly positioned. Now you can compare your original time domain data with the depth converted results and see how the conversion affects the geometry and positioning of reflectors. To check your conversion accuracy, start by importing your well data into Petrel. Load the well heads first, then the well logs or their matters here. Once they're loaded, your well data should line up perfectly with your depth converted seismic data since they're both in the same depth domain. Next, bring in the well tops to see which reflectors match up with the specific geological formations. That makes it super easy to kick off your structural interpretation with high accuracy. All right, now let's see how we can do the same thing in Seismic Flow. Open the file menu and select Segway to load your seismic data. When loading, you'll need to specify the domain type as elevation time or elevation depth. This information isn't stored in standard Segway file headers, so as in Petrol, you have to specify it manually each time you load data. Segway files can vary a lot in their formatting and metadata structure, so Seismic Flow includes various safeguards and fallback mechanisms to handle non-standard files. The key settings to focus on are template type and elevation type. If your data was exported from Petrel, the template type will be set automatically. For seismic data, choose the seismic template and elevation time domain. Seismic flow converts your SegFi data into NumPy tensors, multidimensional arrays that are far more efficient for computation than SegFi files. While SegFi format works fine for data storage, it's not built for the kind of calculations needed in modern interpretation workflows, especially machine learning applications. The NumPy tensor format loads faster, saves faster, and lets you run algorithms much more efficiently. You can choose to save your converted data with compression to reduce disk space usage. After this initial conversion, you'll work directly with the optimized tensor format rather than repeatedly loading SegWi files. Load your velocity data using the same process, file menu, open SegWi, but this time select interval velocity in the template dropdown and elevation time for the domain. Here's a crucial step specific to seismic flow. Both datasets must have identical survey names in their metadata. Check the survey metadata name field for both seismic and velocity data. If these names don't match exactly, Seismic Flow assumes they come from different surveys and won't let the domain conversion run. Simply edit the metadata so both datasets show the same survey name. This tells the software that the velocity data belongs to the same survey as the seismic data. Once the survey names match, the velocity data becomes linked to the seismic data in the data tree. Navigate to the Tools menu and select Depth Conversion. The algorithm automatically creates the velocity model and does the time to depth conversion. Seismic Flow runs this conversion way faster than Petrel, finishing in about 1 minute rather than 5 in this example while getting identical results. This speed improvement comes from algorithm optimizations designed specifically for this type of processing. Your converted data appears as a new entry in the data tree with a TWT to Z suffix where the arrow indicates the domain conversion from time to depth.
Load your well data to verify the conversion results. Unlike Vitro, Seismic Flow doesn't care about the loading order for well information. Well tops should now correctly show which reflectors match up with specific geological formations since both seismic and well data are in the same depth coordinate system. That's the complete workflow for time depth conversion in both platforms. Try this process with your own data, and if you don't have access to Petro, you can download Seismic Flow and follow the same steps. If you found this tutorial helpful, hit that subscribe button, give it a like, and don't forget to leave a comment below. Thanks for watching, and as always, I'll catch you in the next one.